Hey, welcome back to SpruTube. Today I'm going to be building this 172nd Airfix Curtis Hawk. So, let's get started. So, like usual, I washed the sprues before working on this. And then, like any other kit, it's just a matter of cutting out the pieces, cleaning them up, and following the instructions. If you're watching this, you probably know all that already. For planes, I definitely like 172nd scale the most. Uh, I've made a few in 148th, but I I think I prefer 172nd usually. And then for tanks, I like 135th. Uh, I've only partially built a Tiger in 148th, but that seems a little small, and there aren't as many figures to go along with it, so I like 135th. Alright, so here I'm painting the inside of the cockpit before putting it all together because it'd be nearly impossible to paint it afterwards. Uh, if you've done this before, you definitely know that that's a necessary step. So I, while that's drying, I'll prep the next pieces. Dramatic zoom. I don't really have much to say. It's just a lot of cutting out, filing, Sanding. And then doing it over and over again. Uh, so, right there you saw me cut out the joystick but as I was trying to clean it up, it snapped in half because it's tiny. Uh, so I decided to just leave it out because I couldn't fix it. I made sure here to completely block everything I was doing with my hand. It's a very important step. Uh, you want to make sure that anyone watching can't see what's going on. Otherwise, your videos will be too successful. No one wants that. This last piece, after spinning the cockpit around a couple times, um, it was a little tricky to attach. It was a very small attachment point, a very tall piece. I had to keep adjusting it to make sure it didn't fall over. Uh, and then I painted the inside. Uh, same with the sides of the cockpit. I went with olive drab because nothing's more American than olive drab. I think the instructions said to do some sort of yellow, which probably is more accurate, but I have olive drab, so, and it looks okay, so, yeah, olive drab. Pretty much the entire cockpit is the same color. 
the seat and most of the joystick if it was there, the floor, the instrument panel. So yeah, I just painted all of it olive drab. And then later on I touched up the one part with some black, because it was supposed to be black. I realize now that I forgot to put the decal for the instrument panel on. Whoops. So with the painting done, I waited for it to dry and cut out the rest of the pieces for the next step. Which is pretty much the main assembly of the plane. You put the wings together, you attach the wings to the fuselage, and you almost have a whole plane then. Alright, so here I'm joining the two halves of the fuselage. Uh, I feel like most airfix kits, you build the cockpit and attach it to one side of the fuselage, but with this one, you build the cockpit onto the bottom, or the top of the wings, I guess. It's the bottom of the wings, but you build on top of it. I don't know. Um, but with this one, you, yeah, you build it on the wings and then put the fuselage down over it. So that was interesting. A lot of glue here. A lot of seams. Uh, I also attached the propeller slightly incorrectly at this point. Uh, I decided not to have it spin just cause. And here I'm completely blocking me painting the little black detail in the cockpit. Um, yeah, that's how the wing and cockpit attached to the fuselage. There weren't a ton of seams to glue together, so I was a little worried it would come apart, but it seems fine. And I attach the wings, more seams here. The whole time I was working with the wings, I was afraid I was gonna accidentally snap off the two guns protruding on each. From what I've seen, American landing gear, at least in the beginning of the war, was very complicated, unnecessarily. Uh, so the next step was to cut out, clean up, and attach, I believe it's called the cowling. I think it opens and closes to help the engine cool. So this one is on the bottom of the fuselage. I feel like, especially with radial engine planes, which are a bit chunkier in the front, there's usually, like, especially on Japanese planes, the cowling is all the way around the engine. I also attached the next couple steps, which were, I don't know, it's probably an air intake on top some 
guns and the rest of the fuselage, I guess. I also had some cement on my thumb when I put that piece on, so I left a fingerprint, like, in the plastic, so I was fixing it there. Um, then I assembled the tail, the rudder, and the tail pieces. I had a bit of difficulty putting the tail pieces in. It's a very tight fit, so for the first one I sanded the corners off of the little tab that goes into the slot. Um, but the other one I just kind of manhandled it in. Yeah, I checked if it was supposed to go in the other one because it seemed like too big of a tab, but it was just a very tight tolerance. I'm sure they won't be coming out anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, so here I got the wheel stuck, but the weird landing gear I was talking about, on the real plane it kind of drops down and spins, which seems like an unnecessary complication, but yeah, it fit kind of strangely. I don't know if I was doing this in the wrong order or something, but I think it ended up okay. I ended up gluing the wheel to the leg and then gluing that in. Uh, since I have the landing gear up, instead of putting a wheel at the back, there's a little piece that looks like the cover flaps for it that I attached. Then there was this little, I think it's probably a cushion, I don't know, for the pilot's head. Uh, since I already painted the inside, I couldn't use my Tamiya liquid cement, so I used a little bit of super glue to attach it. Uh, then I put on a little stick piece. I never know what those are for. And it's done. I haven't attached the little spiky things on the front, whatever those are. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Uh, and I haven't done the pilot yet. I haven't attached the cockpit glass because I'm going to do that after I've painted the whole thing. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon. Check out my Instagram, too. I post pictures of things I'm working on, even outside of videos, like I'm working on a Nash horn right now. Also got a little diorama I'm working on. So check that out. It's all in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.